Well, Janine, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Good morning and thank you for the invitation. My pleasure. Absolutely wonderful to see you again here in the Grail Studios. Yeah. So we're going to talk about past life regression today and yeah. um, we're going to share some of our experiences and uh, you know myself I've I've been exploring past life regression for 28 years. I studied uh, in a school in Sydney and did hundreds of regressions on myself and other people and uh, it was an amazing transformative experience. Mm. Um, where I really got to sort of understand levels of myself that I could never reach uh, through any other modality. So it's quite an amazing mm. uh, tool to really dive into the deep, deep mm. uh, blockages or um, the, you know, the issues that, that are really virtually impossible to see from mm. the surface. Indeed it is. Mm. It's an incredible underutilized tool. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's a therapy, isn't it? It's yeah, a therapy absolutely. and a tool so that you can have a better quality life in the end. Mm. So I don't think it's taken as seriously as what it needs to be. And I also think it's it it hasn't had its renaissance yet. Mm. I think people like you and I have, have sort of been in the pioneering lane mm. with some of the great regressionists, but um, I don't think we've seen anything yet. No, we haven't seen its full potential no. or, or we haven't seen it utilised to its full no. capacity. No, and I think quite possibly religions had a lot to do with that. Religions kept regression therapy capped yeah. because, of course, in the Christian religions mm. and in Judaism and Islam, mm. which is the majority of the white Western world, uh, you can't have past lives or future lives. You only yeah. have one life on earth. That's right. And the rest was a pre-mortal existence as a as a spirit but she didn't have an incarnation mm. so i think it's not until you step out of judo christianity that it's possible yeah absolutely so, so it's going to take a little while longer before we're i think as a culture we're open to the real value of this work yeah i totally agree let's let's um it's something that definitely needs to be explored mm. on a mass level mm. and um, there's a lot of people that you know are working in different therapies and modalities uh, without using past life regression it's very hard sometimes to get to the bottom mm. of things because of course you know in my own experience i found uh, when i would regress to a past life i would encounter some trauma from that life that was replaying in this life or the story was replaying in this life mm. but it was on mm. such a deep mm. deep deep subconscious unconscious level that you know if i had used traditional therapies to try and understand mm. why i was repeating these same patterns or had these same emotional pulls or mm. what have you um i i would never have really got to the bottom of it and um yeah it's a shortcut isn't it, it it's a shortcut <laughs> Yeah, to figuring yeah. out why we are the way we are. Yeah. And I think that prior to making traction with, with the regression as, you, as your tool for personal growth, mm. it's really important to figure out as much as you can in this lifetime, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Figure out your parenting, your childhood, your traumas, yeah. your relationships, your exes. And, and, and when you've completed all that, I think that's the best time to have a regression. When you've exhausted yeah. everything in this life yeah. and you've said, look, I've gone as far as I can go in understanding this. Why is this so? Yeah. That's when you've got to look back. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. And that is the perfect time to have a regression, don't you think? Absolutely. Because you're really ready then. You're not going to mix this life, that life, that life. You're not going to mix it up into one. It's It becomes crystal clear that the only thing left is to resolve this issue. Mm. Why are we not conscious mm. about certain things? Yeah. And no matter what we do, we can't get the consciousness. That's right. And yet, with one regression, you could get that consciousness straight away. Yes. And, and it's never what you think, is it? No. Like, no. just when you think, oh, I think I've had a past life with this ex-partner and this must have happened you do a regression 
as nothing what you thought yeah. because unconsciousness is unconsciousness. There's no way you can work it out in your conscious mind no. until you get into that unconscious state and then the story is revealed to you and it's yeah. like, whoa, that was so not what I thought that's it was right. going to be. Yeah. And that's when it's therapeutic, yeah, when absolutely. you could not consciously work that out. That's right. And then you can see the pattern and you can understand that this is the, what mm, has been mm, that's in the right. background, driving you, charging your emotions, yeah. pushing and pulling you in different directions. Yeah. And you're totally unaware of it. Makes me think of, I regressed um, a client of mine who's probably about 55 at the time. Mm. He'd had a very, very hard childhood, mm. the worst of the worst. Yeah. And he'd never had a regression before. He suffered from depression, anxiety all his life. And I regressed him thinking that, even I was thinking, oh, maybe this happened in a past life. But actually, we went into a past life where he had had a charmed life. Ooh. He was a, a middle to upper class woman in, in England with everything mm. had everything mm. great marriage money great kids family why did we go back to that yeah. you know yeah. it was not what i thought i was getting really ready for something very horrendous yeah, something but actually what the regression showed him is he'd had a charmed life and he had to learn what it was to have not a charmed life mm. and that taught me a lot too yeah. That it's it's never what you think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if maybe he was taking everything for granted. And the yeah. lesson there mm -hmm. is, I don't know what it is for him, but I could probably guess he didn't appreciate what he had. Mm -hmm. He didn't utilise it fully. He didn't grow enough from that experience. Well, so he was given a whole different set of factors this time around. Yeah. And that certainly woke him right up. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and this is the unfortunate thing that when you do a lot of regression work, you see that these negative patterns just keep repeating uh, until you learn what it, whatever it is you need to learn. Mm. So um, mm. these, like, these lessons that go through lifetimes mm. and get more and more intense and then you know through one individual life get more and more intense mm. until you, you're forced to look at it and go, you know, I want to... I want to understand and fix yeah. this. I it's, want to learn this lesson, so I don't need to repeat It's the it. want, isn't it? It's yeah. that yearning to stop the repetition yeah. is the perfect moment to do a regression. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've got to look for in a client. Do they want to just do it for fun? Mm. Or are they really ready to learn something? Yeah, mm. do they have that desire? Yeah, mm. for sure. And we've both, uh, we've both done regression uh, through different modalities and in different techniques. I mean, ultimately, it's the same result. Mm. But, um, you know, do you want to share a bit about how you learn regression? and what, what Sounds quite techniques? different to you. I sound like a bit of a hack compared to you. No, no. <laughs> if, if it works, um, it works. When I, when I was a child, I think I was telling you this the other day, um, I was an only child. And uh, there were a lot of books in my family, so I read a lot. And it was always about what book I could get my hand on because I didn't have any brothers and sisters to entertain me. Um, so I read a lot as a teenager and I went to the school library one day because I was always interested in mysticism. Went to the school library. I must have gone to, in those days, there were no computers, just went and had a look along and I found a book on regression. Mm. I don't know what the school was thinking at the time because it wasn't part of a curriculum, was it? Regression therapy. It was in the school library, was in the school library and yeah, I picked cool. it out and I read it and, and it was not just about regressions, it was the technique of regressions. Wow. It was how to do regressions. Yeah, what right. were they thinking yeah. at the private school? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. I, I don't, can't remember if I stole it, but I remember devouring it. Mm. And that technique stuck in my head. Now, I was 15 going on 16 
and I was in year 12. So while in between studying maths and science, Mm. I was studying regression therapy. Mm. Now, I didn't have any friends who were into regression therapy. It was just me. But I knew that's what I wanted to do. Like it triggered something inside of me and, and I didn't have any mentors. There were no schools, colleges or anything. I mean, at that stage, I knew I wanted to be an astrologer, but that was conservative compared to doing regression therapy Mm. so I filed that away in my head and then I left home at 17 and washed dishes in a kitchen Mm. and my colleague was a young guy who was 15 I was 17 and he was a bit of a tripper Mm. and he was he was um he used to sit in his shed and do the stock market so he was a nerd basically he was a genius nerd And he didn't have any friends. He was quite eccentric. Mm. And I said, uh, I think the topic of reincarnation came up. Mm. And I said, have you ever done a regression? And he said, no, but I'd love to. And I went, okay, how about we finish washing these dishes? We go back to my place and I'll do a regression on you. And he was very naive. I was very naive. And well, did I pick the best subject? I could not have picked a better subject Mm. because this kid was half genius and he was half in, half out of this world. Mm. And so I regressed him in like seconds and he went into um, a a regress state in whatever lifetimes. Now, in those days I had to record by pressing a button, a tape deck. So I used to do this and we would do it for hours and hours and hours, like eight hours stints of regression in and out of lifetimes. So you went to a college in Sydney. I was sitting in a shared house with a 15-year-old practising. Yeah, awesome. That was my education. Yeah. And uh, after many, many months of many, many tape recordings, yeah. I figured it all out. Yeah, I figured right. that yeah, landscape right. out. Yeah. And I never read a book on it after that yeah. until the internet came. And, of course, then I, I knew there was a lot more going on so i was just self-taught mm. what about you very good yeah that's amazing isn't it brad and so young 15 16 doing it that's and right. and god bless him his name was michael just in case you're listening michael <laughs> i don't know where you are now but uh thank you very much for that <laughs> being my being uh, it was a total experiment and and i got to try things that were not tried you know it was like it was my personal experiment it wouldn't have worked the other way around him regressing me i was the scientist in that moment and i was maneuvering around the universe in and out watching him die watching him be reborn watching everything join the dots so it you know i filed all that away Mm. (laughs) no i'd love to have the tapes God, I was only 17, 18 at the yeah, time. So, wow. Yeah. Tell me your story. Well, my story was uh, I was in uh, a school in Sydney and I just went there to learn meditation. And But one of the techniques that was offered in the transformation process was uh, past life regression. Wow. And so, it was a tool we used weekly. So, we would go to class, yeah. we would learn various techniques of meditation and then we would do past life regression. Sounds like Hogwarts. It was a bit like Hogwarts. It was <laughs> pretty amazing and a, and a very amazing man who, who ran it. Um, and there was like a hundred students, uh, two different classes, some been there for five Gosh. years and really advanced. Was this in the nineties? Uh, yeah, it was yeah. about 98. There were a lot of amazing courses in the 90s, weren't there? You could I, do. I was very lucky to go there and I was very hesitant to go there because, uh, you know, I was didn't want to join some cult. I was worried about all that kind of stuff. And, mm. But it was great because it was very grounded, very tangible. There was no uh, going into the spiritual character that was frowned on and it was really just about doing the work on yourself, for yourself. And in the group situation, uh, it's very powerful. And so we would do meditations and then we would do one-on-one past life regressions where one would be the facilitator and one would be um, the recipient and then we'd swap it around the next week. 
And so I ended up doing hundreds of progressions on people and, and went through hundreds myself um, over a couple of years. And, um, and it was amazing. And so what we did is we, because we were doing a lot of third eye work, uh, we were really using energy to hold the client in a, in a, in a space, in an astral space that we would sort of hold them, um, hold their energy. Then we would scan their aura and we would find a disruption in the aura. And then mm. we would put our finger on that and hold that. And then we would use our third eye to go into that and then we would help the client to go into that spot. And so that spot uh, represented um, what they call a, sams <coughs> a samsara which is like a little seed in your astral body that is from a past life trauma. So mm -hmm. in a past life, you have a trauma, whatever it is. Um, and then when you die, your astral body shatters, your soul then reincarnates. And these little seeds reincarnate with you. And when you're a child and you're growing up, they're very small and they're imperceivable and they don't really affect you. But as you go mm. through life mm. and as you encounter any kind of trauma that is similar to the trauma in the past life, they react. These little seeds get charged with that emotion and then your emotional body gets charged and you start reacting. And then the more you do that, the more powerful these sensor scars become and the more reinforced they become. And so a good way to tell if it's like a samsara or it's just a normal reaction is does it is the trigger that's causing you to have an emotional reaction is it as strong as your emotional reaction mm. and so that's a good way to tell um, if it could be potentially past life related is that if you're having an emotional reaction that's way 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 much much larger than whatever's triggering you mm. that's a really good indicator yeah yeah something underneath. that's a litmus test yeah something deep down that fair um, call firing. so we would scan the aura feel the disruption because there's like sort of when you're scanning someone's aura there's like a little kind of almost it's like something's out of tune and it's vibrating mm. on on a on a, di on a discordant frequency in their aura and you can tune into that quite easily put your finger on that and then hold the space for the client and help them go into the spot and there's normally a lot of resistance around the spot too so it takes time and you know some people need to go back into the same spot a few times but generally you'll find uh, if you're holding the space on the spot and they're willing and wanting to go into that then they'll end up going into a past life regression mm. Um, mm. and so what happens then is it's like it's like watching a movie but um, it's like there's an extra sense and that is emotion. So it's like watching a movie with emotion. And that's how you can tell that it's not your imagination because the emotions that you experience when you're having a regression are, are really impactful. They're very strong. And it's not something mm. that generally happens when you're just using your mm, imagination. That's what it's all about, isn't it? The yeah, emotions. It's, it's diving deep into that emotional trauma from a past life so that you can view it and you feel safe because you're being held or you're being guided by someone. And you can view that in a, in a safe environment and you can unpack that story from the past life. So it's not about who you were, what you looked like, what your job was. Um, it's not about that. It's about what actually happened that created the trauma that's carried on mm. into this life. And it's not always tra trauma. I no, find. It doesn't have to be I mean, it's it, it can be trauma. It can be just an empty, neutral pocket where there hasn't been enough human experience in that area. I mean, I I think we're we're designed to experience the whole gamut, the whole spectrum of yeah. human emotion. If you've missed out in one area, then watch out. Yeah. You cannot evolve into wholeness and self-realization without experience, experiencing hate, joy, love, rejection, sadness, mm. you know, all of them. You have to yeah. experience the richness of the human soul, right? 
I had this amazing insight while I was watching a documentary on psychopaths <clears throat> and um, I remember hearing one of the psychopaths interviewed by a psychologist in the jail and the psychologist was saying, okay, so you bludgeoned someone to death and he said yes and she said, you have no remorse about that and he said, no, I just did what I did. And then I just got on with it. And I remember thinking to myself, this was just a pearl that came at that moment. Mm. That's what my dog would say. My dog would say, I mauled that chihuahua to death, now what's for dinner? Yeah. And then be really loving in the next moment. Mm. And I remember thinking how primitive that was. O on a path of evolution, soul's evolution, mm. there are souls that have come from the animal kingdom mm. like my dog would say that yeah. or some people do behave like snakes they behave like spiders bears you know dogs cats or whatever mm. and i remember thinking gosh those souls haven't been here very long mm. you know yeah, and it just yeah, came to me that yeah. You know, we're all evolving and some of us have had more incarnations and some have had none. Yeah. Some have come straight from the animal kingdom and do not know how to do it. Yeah. They haven't cultivated empathy. But if you've been reincarnated 350 times, like what they say is fairly normal for us, yeah. um, then you've had all those opportunities to earn, learn 350 different aspects of the human condition. Mm. Yeah, it's, it is interesting because uh, you do sort of see that in people. You go, mm. they're an old you soul. You go, well, old soul, yeah. very young souls as well. They've got a lot yeah, of learning yeah. to do. And um, I think that this theory of reincarnation mm. and the evolution of the soul is the only way you can make peace with life. Mm. I think if you think that this is the only life you've got, and you have to achieve everything in this life before you move on. Very big expectations. Yeah. Very, very big. Yeah. How do you do? How How do you come to terms with inequality? How do you come to terms with injustice and betrayal and hurt and abuse? How do you come to terms with that? If you think this is the only life. And sometimes mm. people spend a whole life lifetime just trying to learn one lesson but yeah. don't actually learn that lesson. They don't even learn it. Just one lesson. And one thing I've learned about addiction is if you want to put a substance in the way of, of your growth path, yeah. you won't learn it. Yeah. Oh, so if, you have, if you're addicted to a substance, yeah. you're going to come back and have to do it again. Yeah. I'm totally convinced oh, of that sure. yeah, because yeah. I've seen people in addiction, it pauses their growth. Yeah. So they will never feel abandonment for example while they've got an addiction mm. so if you do that all your life just go no i'm not going to feel that yeah i'm sorry you're going to be given another chance whether you like it or not in a different scenario it's not going to be the same life it's going to be something radically different because i don't think that the universe says we're going to make that mistake again put you in the same place to learn the same thing no we're going to put you somewhere radically different and give that a try Mm. see if that works yeah. yeah and it's uh it's an interesting thing isn't it so um we're here to learn lessons and most of the time we're sleeping mm. through them and yeah. we're not really you know we, we, we because some some of these lessons are so painful we block them mm. and then if they're past life related then they're blocked even further because we don't have a memory mm. of it and you know i i thought that was kind of unfair it's like well it's a bit unfair that you, you, all your past lives memories are wiped or not accessible when you reincarnate. But then when I thought about it, I thought, actually, it's probably just as well, because if you are a baby and... Oh, it's too traumatic. And, and you can remember all you, your past you, no, lives. No, you can't. You're going to be like, shit. You're, <laughs> you're going to be one like, angry baby, aren't yeah, you? For sure. When you've worked that yeah, out. And an angry toddler and an angry teenager, and you're going to be like, shit, I'm doing this again. What the hell's going on? But if you look at, um, there's, a, there's a whole section of YouTube on the subject of children and re reincarnation, which is fascinating. A, a child fully comes into this 
life at the age of eight. Mm. So prior to the age of eight, they do have recall of their past lives, but we don't acknowledge that. But if you look at Indian YouTubes on the subject where reincarnation is acceptable, they've got a whole genre on this subject because a child who's five, Mm. who's half in, half out, goes to their parents and says, "Uh, I can remember my past life. Mm. The Hindu parent goes, oh, fantastic. Tell us about that. I'll take you to the priest. But here they don't. They go, oh, don't be silly. That's ridiculous. Now, nightmares are a big problem for kids. Mm. And those studies have shown that nightmares are quite often past life experiences. Mm. Yeah. If it's not this life, yeah, right. past life. So we it just say, sense, yeah. oh, you're, this poor kid's having a, a nightmare because their parents are getting divorced. Probably not. It's mm. probably something much bigger than that. It may trigger a memory. But the child sort of bit confused because we're telling the child past lives don't exist so what's the child supposed to do with that information yeah, but information. but if you nurt, nurse that for, for, for the audience that do have young children see if you can um, nurse that in them nurture it it's amazing what they come up with art is a good thing for kids mm. to remember their past life but after eight apparently can't remember much yeah, yeah. but I do think you've got to look at people's natural talents you know, yeah. a lot of people have a lot of natural talent. Where does that come from? What about those child prodigies? Oh, yeah. Mozart, you know, at the age of five writing oh, concertos. Incredible. I mean, yeah. that isn't just not humanly possible to learn that, is it? It's, right. it's not, the, the it's not even geniusness. It yes. is past life wisdom. Mm. And, and lots of us have them. Yeah. Look at all those. You've had children, I've had children. What's their obsession, you know? Why are they doing what they're doing? It's often really random. Well, that's the other thing I noticed with my children is that they came in with their own soul blueprint and their own emotional disposition. Mm. So, Mm. uh, and very different, you know, they're both very different. But even before they could talk, I could see, you know, what type of character, what type of emotional character Mm. they, they were. And now they're 20 and 22 that is still the same mm. and so for me having children was an amazing way to see yeah they they come in with their own soul blueprint and emotional disposition and then they go through life and they learn and the, and, the, and it's sort of shaped a bit more but uh, i didn't really appreciate that until until seeing that in my child before they could talk before they learned any coping strategies or anything they were already uh, you know, whether how they react to the motion mm. was already there. I know my daughter had a dream about being a convict when mm. she was about eight. Yeah. And she came out and she said it very vividly. Mm. She said, I was really there. Mm. She really didn't even know what a convict was at that point. Mm. And what I'd noticed about my daughter is she was obsessed with freedom mm. and obsessed mm. with freedom and injustice and couldn't handle restriction at all it didn't come from this life i didn't know where it came from i'd never regressed her but when she had that dream and she came to me i went ah okay i get it Mm. she was a convict Mm. so she didn't have freedom and her human rights were violated hence the obsession with human rights from a very young age. Yeah, I had a similar experience with one of my regressions. I was going into the belly and, um, you know, the belly uh, regressions are really intense because you're, normally you have a lot of layers over your will center and you have Mm. a lot of disconnection from your will center. So you have to go through all those layers to really find your power and reclaim your power. And quite often we, you know, block that through trauma in this life or trauma in past lives and sometimes it's both and then it's a double uh, impact and a double blocking of the will center 
and um, in one of my regret and, and the regressions were amazing like we actually in the school we had a padded room yeah people would start screaming and oh, wow. get into these lifetimes where they're you know warrior uh, with broadsword dying in a battlefield or whatever and they would feel it and because you're activating mm, the belly mm, it it's all really stored intense. there and and then you know you'd be wrestling around they'd be screaming so we take them down to this room with pads on the floor and then they could really work it out and afterwards you feel incredible you feel amazing but this regression I had um, was I was chained to, in one of my past lives I was chained to a wall in a dungeon and mm. I had given up I had gone through so much frustration and um, uh, everything that I just I, I just given up and I disconnected from my will center in that life because there was nothing I could do and it was a feeling of futility and so so that um, that regression was when I was doing a lot of belly work and it was really interesting because I could feel in this life times when I just felt like oh well there's nothing I can do about this so I'm just gonna give up and so that part of me that was that had been so heavily mm, shattered in that mm. life and carried on <clears throat> and was repeating that pattern and, and disconnected me from mm. my will center and my ability to be in my strength and to be able to finish things to you know be uh to feel you know strong in, in that sense mm, so, mm. It's, so. what's fascinating about that one is if you were chained in a dungeon for the rest of your life mm. you don't ever get a chance to overcome that do you no. it, it comes with you yeah. you die feeling that disempowerment yeah. Yeah, it was, and it was may, th maybe that's how it had to be and you had to come into another situation to overcome it and maybe the point of that lifetime was something else not necessarily to overcome disempowerment to overcome something else yes correct yeah and that's the thing is that you know you, you can go under one samskara there's another one and there's another yep. one and there's another that's one that's right hundreds of them and then you get to the big ones at the very bottom and mm. but the nice thing about doing the work is that for example when i, I did that belly work uh regression i after i've been screaming and feeling that pain and angst and all the all the different emotions really intensely uh there was like an angelic presence that came in and mm. realigned all of my energy centers and opened up my belly and i could feel this really nice sort of white light coming mm. in so it doesn't always happen with the regression but sometimes when they're really deep and there's a big if it's shift. time, it yeah. can happen. If it's yeah, time, really if you've worked hard enough on the subject, the only thing left is grace, mm. and mm. that's what happens. Yeah, and so that was amazing to feel this total realignment in my energy, and then uh, yeah, it was a massive shift for me and a really nice reconnection to yeah. my center and my yeah. power and my and, that, the, and that's and then, liberation. So you're talking about emotional triggers and energetic triggers. Yeah. I'm really interested in physical ones. Mm. I'm really interested in the diseases that we have, yeah. that we came in with, yeah. that just don't budge. Mm. And there's, you know, children born with asthma and eczema and uh, people that have headaches all their life. Mm. Um, there are people with scars and birthmarks are a classic aren't they with regression so um children that have birthmarks it, it, it is known to be their physical scar that's come through from an injury yeah, wow. that really fascinates me mm. as a naturopath you know why why do we have illnesses that can't be fixed yeah, what's the wow. point of all that yeah, what yeah. how does that happen so we've had it as a child it never changes it's not responsive to treatment. Nobody can heal it. Mm. Why? Why does that happen? And and the answer is often in a past life. There's no guarantee you'll heal that illness, but I think as a therapy, it's got huge potential for understanding. Mm. You know, and, and we've all 
got a mind body and a soul and we've got to carry this body around and we've really got to understand it yeah, what I, is it trying to teach it's, us it's really uh, important you know it's why huge, are people yeah. deaf why are people born with one eye you know why why are people born without legs you know what what is all that it, it if you believe in the soul's evolution and spiritual development there's got to be a reason for that and so I'm really interested in regressing people with physical ailments. Yeah, yeah. And even if the regression doesn't provide any answers for a cure, mm. the next best thing is acceptance. I did a regression and, and I haven't had lots of regressions on myself. I've done mostly on other people, but I did do a regression and I was a Greek philosopher mm. and I was being all of a sudden I was in was probably Rome or something like that and there were amphitheaters everywhere and people everywhere crowds and I was being dragged by two go, um, two guards down the stairs into a public space and then I was taken along the street to some gates and I was a little shocked that I was in there and I didn't know why I was being taken to these gates and then I worked out, I still get a rush thinking about it. And then I worked out that it was the amphitheatre where the lions were. Mm. And I was about to be ripped apart by lions. And then I got such a shock, I woke up. Mm. I just went, <gasps> and I was there. But I um, thought about it for a while and thought, okay, started researching philosophers. I was always very philosophical as a child. And, but I didn't know much about Greek philosophers. But I was a vegetarian as a child. I yeah. was, I, I, I just wanted to be a vegetarian. That was it. I was a vegetarian for a long time. And I'm not now. But I, when I was researching Greek philosophers, they were all vegetarians. And that's what I didn't know. And I went, interesting, interesting. That's just what I always wanted to do. And then sometime later, I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm allergic to cat scratches. Mm. Big time. Yeah. I have a very bad relationship with cats. And uh, I have nightmares of being scratched under the dining table by cats. Yeah, that, yeah. That's one of my few repetitive dreams. Mm -hmm. So whilst it hasn't taken away my cat allergy, I don't, it's not a loaded topic for me anymore. You know, I don't have a fear of cats. Mm. Um, cats don't cause me any problems. And, you know, allergic responses uh, are all about memory. So I, I don't know if that response will ever go away. But I completely understand what's going on. Yeah. Because mm. no one in my family was like that. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. Yeah. What about you? Well, I mean, it's funny. I, I, just as you were speaking, I was thinking about... I, I quite often get wrist pains um, and have throughout my life at various times, you know, mm. and not really anything uh, that seems to be a physical, mm. you know, there's, there's no real physical reason for it. Um, and I was just thinking then that that could be the past life. Wrist tying. Chained to, the, mm. chained to the wall. Indeed. If that was one of your last memories before yeah. you die of yeah. wrist pain, yeah. it would have been excruciating too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so that's quite interesting. It makes a bit of sense. I mean, we've got a whole industry based on suppressing symptoms. Yeah. How are we going to come to terms with all that ill health? Mm. I think this is a really, really good tool. It mm. is a good tool. It's a good tool on, on all those levels. And um, and ultimately, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important one because if you're not learning your lessons and if you're not connecting with your, your higher self, and your truth in this life, then you're really wasting a lot of time and you're really sleeping, yeah. sleeping through the life. You've got to make the most of this life. Mm. Have your eyes wide open and learn as much as you can. If you mm. stop learning, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're really in That's trouble. Right. We never stop learning and we should always be striving for more. We should. I'm very ambitious with my life purpose and I can't understand why people aren't. But I think because I was introduced to this concept and witnessed it mm. more importantly very early in life i've always been very quick 
to learn my mistakes because I still have visions of young Michael being regressed, watching the agony of his deaths and rebirths and all of the dramas that he went through. I could write a book on it. Um, I was damn sure. I wasn't going to do that. Yeah, you know, right. like I had to really get with the project. One of the amazing things we learned at 15. It was. Incredible. It was. So I started my adult life witnessing someone who, who'd been through reincarnation. And learning the same lessons over and over. And just over. going, well, I ain't doing that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I mean, that's very arrogant to say that, but I'm doing my best yeah. to take the lessons that are given, work as hard as I can not suppress them Mm. and when i can't figure them out there's probably going to be a past life uh experience yeah and and you know the human being's natural tendency is to go oh well that feels painful i don't want to go into that yeah a lot of people who prescribe medication for emotions they can't handle so everything gets blocked in our society you know you're not allowed to feel like shit Everyone says, how are you going? Oh, I'm going great. You might not be going great. You might feel like shit. It's important to feel like shit. Life's yeah. not always about feeling great. We go up and down like a wave all the time. Yeah. And those down periods are important to explore mm. these things. Explore where your pain's coming from, yeah. why you feel uncomfortable. That's common is. when somebody, when you suggest to someone to have a regression, they go, oh, what if... What if I died a painful death? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a big resistance. Yeah. And if there's 350 lives, for example, it's going to happen. Yeah. We didn't have antibiotics till 1947, so there's a fair chance every one of them was painful. But why shy away from that? You're actually not in it. That's the point. You're yeah. reliving it, and it, there's a release in that. Yeah. There's a release of yeah. fear if you can go through it again, not dying. Yeah. And not literally feeling it, but feeling it. And, and what an opportunity to learn what, what took a whole lifetime to learn. Yeah. In this lifetime. Have another crack at it. Yeah. I, I also study near-death experiences, mm. which I think complement your yeah. belief on reincarnation. So yeah. for the people that get to the other side and then turn around and come back. Yeah, right. to, and they live to tell the story. Yeah, so that's quite fascinating. Yeah. It, there's really fascinating. That's taught me a lot. There's lots of research on that too. Mm. And what's exciting about that is that when you get to the other side, you have choice. And the choice is based on your awareness. Whether you come back in again mm. or whether you stay on the other side is completely up to you. Mm. It's completely up to your consciousness at that time. If you go in, well, go into the death experience, unaware, uneducated, you end up in a very ordinary place and then you're straight back. Mm. No, no choice. It's like lucky dip. You just get what you're given. But if you are educated on the subject of, of dying, where you go after death, what happens on the other side and that space in time where you get to you get a uh, you get to make a decision about what you do next Mm -hmm. and so you're not just shunted into the next past life without a choice if you train yourself with awareness you get there and you go hmm okay will i stay or will i go and i i learned this from have you read autobiography of a yogi no. Oh my goodness, there's a fantastic chapter on this, what it's like on the other side before you choose to come back. Mm. Half of us stay there, half of us decide to come back. Yeah. And the more awareness you have, the more choice you have in the life to come. Mm. So if if you get to the other side and you go, you know what, I don't think I experienced enough love. I want to go back and I want to experience more love. Mm. And you get to decide than your parents, your environment. You get to create that life. But if you go in not knowing what's going on, it will be chosen for you. Mm. And I found that really helpful. Mm. Yeah, that Mm. makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, they say we choose our parents. I think we do, but there's more choice than others. If you don't want to choose anybody and you're just not playing games, You just get to the other side and go, I don't believe in this. I don't know what's going on. Ah, Mm. 
Mm. It'll be chosen for you because you're not going to be a willing participant. So whoever's orchestrating the other side will go, ah, let's just take this one and put them there. That'll be the best family for them. So you don't have any choice. And you'll come in pretty angry about that. Going, how did I get here? What's going on? This is not my family. But doing it with consciousness. And you take your consciousness with you. Mm. You don't lose your memory on the other side. You gain your memory on the other side and go, oh, what was that? That was a bit of a dream. Take your consciousness with you and choose very carefully with responsibility on the other side. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Just doing the work, doing the work on yourself. Do the work, yeah. Treat it like a job. Your personal development, your spiritual development is a job. Yeah, that's right. It's a job. You have to put time into it. You have to, sometimes you've got to pay people to help you. You've got to consult priests, mentors, life coaches, Mm. whoever. Consult whoever you need to to work it out and don't stop Mm. because that is your life purpose. Everybody thinks their life purpose is to, I don't know, be a doctor or be a social worker. No, your purpose is to work out all of these things. Work out your issues. Work out where you've come from. Work out where you're going. That is your life purpose. There is nothing better to do than work that out. Be the best version of yourself that you can be. Yeah, work your stuff out. Mm. Yes, it's hard, but what else are you going to do? Yeah. What else is there to do that's better than that? Because the rewards are incredible, aren't they? They are. Once you've worked out some of your sansara to the best of your ability, the universe um, gives you a reward for that. Could be happiness, a loving relationship freedom opportunity who knows you don't you don't just work it out and then oh good tick you are rewarded big time and and it could just be that you're rewarded by having more light come in more light just being a better human on the earth that's a good reward people like you the less karmic baggage you have the more people like you and therefore they're nicer to you Mm. they're kinder to you they're more supportive of you because Mm. you're not dumping and projecting your past life baggage onto them yeah you're not going you hate me you're an angry person you're you're Mm. taking responsibility from where from for where you've come from yeah absolutely and you're not pushing it onto your partner yeah or your family and that's attractive that's Mm. what makes someone charismatic when they've done that work yeah absolutely Mm. wonderful all right well thank you so much janine thanks for having me great to great to talk to you about all these amazing things i know we could chat all day all weekend (laughs) (laughs) all right wonderful Mm. thank you so much thank you okay beautiful